the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Happening now at 6, covering the entire DMV. A woman killed at a parking lot. The fatal shooting overnight near the DC Maryland line. No shooter in custody. And an ex principal in hot water. A former school leader accused of sexual harassment and bullying. The latest details in Maryland. And a kilted Christmas, the holiday parade in Virginia celebrating Scottish heritage, the sights and sounds parading through Alexandria. And waiting for some rain showers to arrive here everywhere across the region. Some steady rain overnight tonight, as well as some low visibilities. We'll talk about that coming up. Plus a championship showdown. We're live on the field as two Frederick County rival schools duke it out for the top title. And good evening. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 6. I'm Ben Dennis this Saturday evening. Police in Prince George's County are searching for a suspect in the shooting that left one woman dead. They say it happened around 11 o'clock last night on the 4800 block of Marlboro Pike in Capitol Heights. It's near the DC line. When police got there, they found a woman with several gunshot wounds. She was taken to the hospital where she died. If you have any information, call police. And take a look at these photos from DC Fire and EMS. They say a person was rescued from the Anacostia River just this morning. Officials say that happened near V Street Southwest at the James Creek Marina around 9 this morning. Officials believe that a man fell from a fuel dock at the marina and drifted out into the river. He was pulled out of the water in stable condition. He did not need to be sent to a hospital after that rescue. And an investigation into a former Maryland middle school principal accuses him of sexual harassment and bullying. Montgomery County's inspector general says Dr. Joel Beidelman violated the district's policies on sexual harassment and bullying while on the job. Beidelman was the principal at Farquhar Middle School and then promoted to principal of Paint Branch High. But he was placed on leave following an extensive Washington Post investigation. The Montgomery County School Superintendent calling Beidelman's behavior disturbing and egregious. She says it's crucial the community knows that any type of abusive behavior will not be tolerated. She also says she's now working with a diverse group on a comprehensive action plan. And your time now is 6.02 on DC News Now. Over to your weather now with Scott Sumner. Scott, I know that we have some rain in the forecast overnight coming our way. Yeah, and it could be steady to moderate while we're sleeping. Uh, and temperatures, we haven't seen any rain today, obviously. And temperatures, as you can see here, have been right at the normal mark for the high, 53. The average low should be 37. We're a little above that. And we're going to be mild again tonight with those clouds and showers coming into play here. The record high, 73 back in 1970. The record low, 15 back in 1880. 86. Temperatures, like I said, will stay steady with those clouds and showers in here. Remember last weekend we were showing this graphic and we we're showing freezing temperatures and below freezing numbers. Well, not tonight. This weekend as a whole will be an opposite of what we saw just last weekend where we'll have mild air, not only today, but going into tomorrow as well. And you can see back here with our satellite radar view down around Roanoke, over towards Charleston, West Virginia. These showers will be steadily creeping up in our direction here. And we'll also have some low visibilities potential. I'm seeing uh, some fog possible here as we go throughout the overnight. The yellow bars here are showing greater than two miles, and these numbers represent the mileage four and five miles visibility in and around the district. But that's not to say that some places could get below that mark and for your evening planner tonight expect those rain showers to develop so if you're going to be out grab that umbrella grab that rain jacket out there uh, temperatures are not going to be an issue as you see here holding into the 50s but again rain is going to be on our doorstep here most likely a little after the mid evening period so wet weather tonight Sunday morning fog and showers mild temperatures this weekend and more showers return on Tuesday night we'll break it down with that seven day forecast as I always do Ben looking forward to it thank you Scott in the district the Marbury Plaza apartments in southeastern are now up for sale. Tenants there have been pushing for improved living conditions at the complex lately. Residents have even urged D.C. city government to take over the complex to make those needed repairs and maintenance. You can see some of the examples right there on your screen. That apartment now officially looking for a buyer after filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy earlier this year. Turning to a D.C. News Now exclusive where we identify the dangerous working conditions for air traffic controllers in the DMV. That's at Dulles and Reagan airports. According to records, as of September this year, controllers at the Washington Tower already clocked in nearly 6,000 overtime hours. Workers at the Dulles Tower facing similar problems with overtime hours nearly doubling from 2021 to 2022. 
In August, the FAA announced a series of meetings following an alarming number of close calls and near misses on runways across the nation. On a day you might get severe thunderstorms in the area and you're having to reroute a bunch of traffic, you might not have the bodies to get in there and really do it successfully. Most jobs you can have a slip and it's not a problem. Our slip could be deadly. This comes as Congress weighs an FAA reauthorization bill facing a December 31st deadline. And high school football history is being made tonight in Maryland, and it's happening at a state championship game. Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis is where we find sports reporter Alex Flum. It's a little chilly out there, Alex, but hey, plenty to cover in the big matchup. Oh yeah, Ben, it's chilly and it's foggy, and you might not believe me, but there is a football field behind me actually right now here at Navy. Crazy fog, there's another game going on right now. I tried to look at the scoreboard to see even what the score was, and you can't even see the scoreboard from here, so it's gonna be interesting conditions for the nightcap game tonight, which is the big one. Of course, it's history. Anytime a team makes it to the championship, the bigger history tonight, two Frederick County teams playing each other for the first time ever in a title game. That's the 3A title game between Oakdale and Linganore. And these two teams, they know each other pretty well. They're rivals seven miles apart from each other. You could drive between these schools in about 10 minutes. And here's why, where the history comes in. This is the first time ever that these two teams from Frederick County are meeting each other in the state title game. Both these squads, they recognize how special that is, and they say it shows just how good Frederick County high school football is. It also makes them each want to be even, they each want to beat each other even more. Frederick County football is the best in the state, top to bottom. I feel like it always has been from a public school perspective. You know, us and Leganor have probably been the two best programs over the last 10 years or so in the county. So we're very excited to get to play somebody that we're familiar with on such a big stage. We played all those out-of-county teams in the playoffs, and we said what we did, we were going to kill them, and we did. So just the fact that two Frederick County teams are playing in the state championship is very special, and I think it's very cool. Speaks loud about uh, Frederick County football, uh, two, the last two teams standing up from our county. Uh, they, they're both very highly sought of throughout the state so it's uh it's uh, yeah it's, it's it's good for Frederick County it just kind of shows like what the youth football programs really do we've always been competing really hard all the way from first grade I think that's kind of what Frederick County's good at is you know you play all these kids your whole life like we've played all these Oakdale kids we've grown up playing them since kindergarten so you know it's familiar faces So this will be a good one tonight. Linganore led by longtime head coach Rick Connor. He's looking for his seventh title in about 22 years with the program. Oakdale's only existed since 2010. They're looking for their second title in program history. They won back in 2018 under their head coach, Kurt Stein. Oakdale's undefeated. Linganore has just one loss this year, and it came to Oakdale by one score where Oakdale won it late in the game. So this should be a good one. It'll be interesting to see how this fog impacts the game. Game scheduled to start at 7, but might start a little bit later. Of course, either way, we'll have coverage tonight on game night at 11. For now, Ben, I'm going to send things back to you in studio. Alex Flum live in Annapolis tonight. Stay safe, and hopefully you could see more of that game from your perspective. Thanks. And you've heard the bagpipes in Alexandria ringing in the holiday season today, the 52nd annual Alexandria Scottish Christmas Walk Parade. It's according to the parade's website, the event was created to honor the city's Scottish heritage. We caught up with some folks who took part in the celebration to see how they're feeling this holiday season. It's just an incredible spirit of friendship and kindness and energy that is here on the streets of Alexandria, one of the great cities in America. And oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. We always love this parade. The crowd was yeah. outstanding. That makes yeah. it easy. Yeah. I have bad knees and bad everything, and it was just so much easier by the fact that we had the crowd supporting us today. Yeah. Looks like plenty of fun indeed. The event also featured live music from U.S. National Scottish fiddle champion and DMV-based musician Sean Healy. And if you're in a giving mood this holiday season, Fairfax County is sharing some ways to help your local community. The county is releasing a guide with several opportunities to donate. The county fire and rescue department is collecting toys on behalf of Toys for Tots. They're accepting new unwrapped toys from now until December 17th. The Annandale United Methodist Church and the Providence District Office are accepting winter gear donations, drop off new or gently used hats, gloves and coats. And the Police Department's Victim Service Division is hosting a gift card drive until December the 16th. Montgomery County Council is unanimously supporting the introduction of a measure to get 
rid of minimum parking requirements in the county for buildings. Officials say that the proposal would get rid of those parking minimums for developments near rail and bus stations. They say those minimums are outdated. Officials say they hope the move should encourage people living in the area to get rid of their car and switch to public transport. Officials also say that they hope the move will also help ease the housing crisis in the county. There will be a public comment period on that bill January the 16th. And a heads up for commuters, Metro has some closures to keep in mind throughout this weekend. The Virginia Square George Mason University Station will close Sunday morning due to a safety exercise, we're told. Well, that station will reopen at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Free shuttle buses from Boston to Clarendon will replace the Metro during those affected hours.